What is proof of work, POW, and how does it work? The original goal for cryptocurrencies included decentralization as a fundamental component. To do so, a method of confirming transactions without the involvement of financial institutions was required. Proof of work was the first answer to this problem. Proof of work is a method of adding fresh blocks of transactions to the blockchain of a cryptocurrency. You'll have a better understanding of the coins that use proof of work if you understand it. This can also assist you in deciding where to invest your crypto funds. So keep watching to learn what proof of work is and how does it work. Let's dive right in. What is consensus mechanism? Consensus mechanisms, also known as consensus protocols or consensus algorithms, enable distributed systems, computer networks, to collaborate while remaining secure. We use the term consensus to refer to a universal agreement. Consider a group of five individuals who are heading to the movies. A consensus is reached when three out of the five people agree on a film, majority rules. In the case of blockchain, obtaining consensus means that at least 51% of the network's nodes agree on the network's next global state. These mechanisms have been used to achieve consensus amongst database nodes, application servers, and other enterprise infrastructure components for decades. New consensus methods have been developed in recent years to allow crypto economic systems like Bitcoin and Ethereum to agree on the network state. In a crypto economic system, a consensus mechanism also aids in the prevention of certain kinds of economic attacks. By controlling 51% of the network, an attacker can theoretically compromise consensus. Consensus mechanisms are in place to prevent this 51% attack. Different approaches have been developed to address this security issue in various ways. What is proof of work? Proof of work, commonly abbreviated to POW, is a method that prevents double spending. This is a consensus algorithm used by the majority of major cryptocurrencies. That's how we refer to a method for securing the blockchain of a cryptocurrency. Proof of work was the first consensus method to emerge and it remains the most popular to this day. Satoshi Nakamoto first mentioned it in the Bitcoin white paper in 2008, but the concept was conceived much earlier. In the pre-cryptocurrency days, Adam Back's Hashcash was an early example of a proof-of-work algorithm. Receivers could reduce spam by asking senders to perform a little bit of computation before sending an email. This calculation would cost a genuine sender almost nothing, but it would quickly pile up if someone was sending emails in bulk. When the same funds are spent twice, this is known as a double spend. You'll have a hard time spending the same real cash twice, hence the term is virtually exclusively used in the context of digital money. Today, when you pay for a coffee, you pass over cash to the cashier, who will most likely deposit it in a register. You can't use the same bill to pay for another coffee at the coffee shop across the street. In digital cash schemes, there's a possibility that you could. You've almost certainly copied and pasted a computer file before. You can send the same file to 10, 20 or 50 people at the same time. You must prevent people from copying and spending identical units in multiple places because digital money is just data. Otherwise, your currency will quickly collapse. Why is proof of work necessary? Users broadcast transactions to the blockchain network if they're familiar with the technology. However, those transactions aren't regarded as genuine right away. This happens only once they've been put on the blockchain. The blockchain is a large database that every user may access to see if funds have been spent previously. Consider this scenario. You and three pals each have a notepad. You write it down whether one of you wishes to make a transfer of whatever units you're using. Alice pays Bob five units. Bob pays Carol two units and so on. Another complication is that you must refer to the transaction where the funds originated each time you make a transaction. So if Bob paid Carol with two units, the entry would be as follows. Carol received two units from Bob's previous transaction with Alice. We now have a way to keep track of the units. Everyone will notice right away if Bob tries to conduct another transaction with the exact units he just transferred to Carol. The transaction will not be added to the notepad by the group. In a small group, this might work nicely. Because everyone knows each other, they'll probably agree on who should enter transactions into the notepad. What if we wish to invite 10,000 people? The notepad concept doesn't scale effectively since no one wants to entrust their personal information to a stranger. 
This is where the proof of work system comes into play. It ensures that users do not spend money they do not have permission to spend. A proof of work algorithm combines game theory and encryption to allow anyone to update the blockchain according to the system's rules. How does proof of work work? The blockchain is our notepad. However, rather than adding transactions one by one, we group them into blocks. The transactions are broadcast to the network and then users building blocks will include them in the candidate block. The transactions will only be considered genuine if their candidate block has been added to the blockchain as a confirmed block. However, adding a block isn't inexpensive. Proof of work necessitates a miner, a person who creates the block, devoting part of their resources to the task. This resource is computational power, which is used to hash the data in the block until a puzzle solution is found. To generate a block hash, you must first send the block's data through a hashing function. The block hash functions similarly to a fingerprint in that it serves as a unique identifier for your input data. Reversing a block hash to get input data is really hard. Knowing an input, on the other hand, makes confirming that the hash is right as a breeze. You only need to pass the input through the function and compare the results. You must give data whose hash fulfills specific conditions in proof of work. However, you have no idea how to get there. The only way to determine if your data matches the conditions is to run it through a hash function. If it doesn't, you'll need to make minor changes to your data to obtain a different hash. Even changing one character in your data will provide a completely different outcome. Thus, there is no way of knowing what the output will be. As a result, if you wish to make a block, you'll have to make a guess. You normally gather data on all of the transactions you want to add, as well as some other pertinent information, and then hash it all together. However, because your data set won't change, you'll need to include a variable piece of data. Otherwise, the output would always be the same hash. The variable data is referred to as a nonce. It's a number that you'll modify with each try, so each time you get a different hash. This is what we refer to as mining. To summarize, mining is the process of collecting blockchain data and hashing it with a nonce until a specific hash is discovered. You acquire the right to broadcast the new block to the network if you locate a hash that meets the protocol requirements. The other network participants update their blockchains to include the new block at this time. The prerequisites for large cryptocurrencies today are extremely difficult to meet. The more difficult it is to find a legitimate hash on the network, the greater the hash rate. This is done to prevent blocks from being discovered too soon. As you might expect, trying to guess a large number of hashes can be taxing on your computer. You're squandering CPU cycles and electricity. If you locate a legitimate hash though, the protocol will reward you with cryptocurrency. Let's review everything we've learned so far. You have to pay a lot of money to mine. If you create a legitimate block, you will be rewarded. Non-mining users can verify that a block is genuine without using much processing power by knowing the hash of input. So far, everything has gone well. But what if you try to deceive the system? What's to stop you from stuffing the block with several false transactions and getting a legitimate hash? That's where public key cryptography comes in. Now, that is an entirely separate topic, and we won't go into much detail in this video, but in short, we use some neat cryptographic tricks that allow any user to verify whether someone has the right to move the funds they're attempting to spend. You sign a transaction when you generate it. Your signature and public key can be compared to anyone on the network to see if they match. They'll also make sure you can spend your money and that the total of your inputs exceeds the total of your outputs i.e. you're not spending more than you have. The network will immediately reject any block that contains an invalid transaction. It will cost you a lot of money if you try to cheat. You'll squander your resources for no reason. The beauty of proof of work is that it makes it costly to deceive while rewarding to operate honestly. Any reasonable miner will be looking for a return on their investment, thus they will act in a way that ensures revenue.